in the last video, we looked at the Myhill Neuron method for minimizing DFAs, where we drew this table and filled up the pairs of states that were distinguishable from each other. And then given those pairs of states, we constructed the minimal DFA. That algorithm is quite intricate. And for those of you who are looking for something quicker, here's a way that you could minimize the DFA in a much faster way. So we're going to start by first looking at the definition of the automaton. So we call the automaton M and we define it with its set of states Q, the alphabet sigma, delta, the transition function, Q naught, the um, initial state, and capital F, the set of final states. We define the set of states um, as Q containing from Q naught to Q9, the set of final states F containing Q3, Q4, Q8, and Q9 and the alphabet sigma, which is a and b. The transition function that we draw is a little different only in terms of the fact that we group the states um, in terms of those that are not final and then those that are final. So we separate them out. So in the top half of the transition function, we have the set of states that are non-final and the bottom half, we have the set of states that are final. It doesn't really matter if you have the final states first or not. Um, it's just that this makes it more convenient for me to explain things to you. If you're on this video and you don't know what a DFA is, please check out the video in the description for the definition of a DFA and why we construct DFAs. Let's move on. All right, so if you remember, the set of non-except states and the set of except states are distinguished by the fact that in the except states, words that reach the except state get accepted, whereas words that take you to a state which is not a not non-accept state are rejected. So by definition, these two types of states are different, uh, which is where we get into what are called distinguishable states. Understanding distinguishable states allows us to then minimize the DFA because a minimized DFA essentially does not contain any redundant states. So if two states are distinguishable, that is, they, are, they, they perform different functions in the DFA, you need to keep them. But if two states perform exactly the same function, then it doesn't really matter if you delete one of them. This is the idea of what we call distinguishable states. We now fill up the transition function table here. If you're not familiar with what a transition function is, then please go to the video in the description on DFAs to understand what a transition function is and how to fill up the table. Let us now look at the steps for minimizing the DFA. Broadly speaking, we are going to be manipulating the transition table using the following two steps. In the first step, we identify sets of states that are distinguishable. So for any two states P and Q that are found to be distinguishable, we place P in one partition and place Q in another. We keep doing this until we've gone through all the states. There is a natural partition that exists between the set of non-final states and final states, as we've already seen that these two sets of states are distinguishable on the empty string. Before we proceed, what we'll do is we'll mark the states that are final in the transition table in the transition function. The base case is distinguishing sets of states on the empty string. And we do this when we distinguish the sets of states that are final states and non-final states. Once we mark in the transition function, the states that are final and non-final as uh, destination states. We now look at distinguishing between those states that are non-final and distinguishing between those states that are final. That is, we try to further partition the set of states that are final and non-final. And we do this by considering words of increasing length. So assuming a counter k, which is the number of symbols in a string, we start with words of length 1 and try and find um, states that are distinguishable with words of length 1 and then we look at words of length 2 and so on. So looking at words of length 1, if you observe, Q0 is distinguishable from Q1, Q2, Q5, Q6 and Q7 because on a A, Q0 goes to Q1, which is a non-final state, whereas Q0 on a B goes to Q9, which is a final state. And that is different from the pattern we see from Q1 to Q7. So we are going to put a number 1 indicating that this is the first partition of the set of states. And the first partition contains only Q0. Next, we look at Q1, Q2, and Q5. And we observe that Q1, Q2, Q5, on an A, all three go to final states. That is Q8, Q3, and Q4. And on a B, they go to non-final states. And this is different from the pattern we see with Q6 and Q7, 
which on A and B go to non-final states. Therefore, Q1, Q2, Q5 are placed in one partition and we call that partition 2. Next, Q6 and Q7 with just one letter, one symbol cannot be distinguished. So we place Q6 and Q7 in a single partition called partition 3. Among the final states, on an A, all the final states go to non-final states and on a B, all the final states go to some final state. So uh, we still can't yet distinguish between the final states. So we'll still club all of them into one partition and call it 4. So we go ahead with the next round that is k equal to 2 and look for words of length 2. Now the advantage is since we've already considered words of length 1, we already have one level of partitioning. So we only need to consider adding another letter and uh, partitioning with respect to an additional letter. So when looking for words of length 2, we can use column k equal to 1, which distinguishes on words of length 1. Remember, words of length 2 are simply all words of length 1 plus an additional letter or symbol. So among the partitions already existing in k equal to 1, we see that we can't partition those any further. The reason behind this is that Partition 1 contains only one state. Among states in partition 2, which are Q1, Q2, Q5, we observe that all these on an A go to final states which are in the same partition in the column K equal to 1, that is partition 4, whereas on a B, Q1, Q2, Q5, all go to um, states in partition 2, which are Q, uh, Q1, Q2, Q5. Um, more, more specifically, Q1 on a B goes to Q2, Q2 on a B goes to Q2, and Q5 on a B goes to Q5, which are all in partition 2. So we can't, part we can't partition partition 2 any further. Similarly, for partition 3, we see that uh, both Q6 and Q7, on an A, they go to partition 3, and on a B, they go to partition 2. So we can't, with regards to K equal to 1, partition uh, partition 3 further. Partition 4, however, can be partitioned in the following way. Um, you observe that Q3, Q4, Q8, all on an A go to states in partition 2, whereas um, on a B, they go to states that are in the partition 4. Q9, on the other hand, goes to partition 3 on an A. So Q3, Q4, Q8, and Q9 can be partitioned into two partitions, 4 and partition 5. We next consider words of length 3 and see if we can partition these sets further. So when trying to partition in column k equal to 3, we now only refer to the previous column which is k equal to 2. So in k equal to 2, in partition 1, we have only one state so we can't partition it further. In partition 2, we have three states and when observing these three states, we still see that all three states go to the same partitions on A and all three states go to the same partition on B. So we can't partition them further. The same goes for the partition number 3. Q6 and Q7 go to the same partition, that is partition 3 on an A, and they go to partition 2 on a B. So we can't partition those two states. Among the final states, there are partitions 4 and 5. Among states in partition 4, the states on an A all go to partition 2, and the states on a B all go to partition 4. So we can't partition this any further either. And partition 5 contains only Q9. So we can't partition a single state partition and therefore the set of partitions remains the same. The moment you have two iterations where the number of partitions remains the same, uh, we stop and we can draw the minimal DFA. We draw the minimal DFA using the partitions that were present in the last iteration. So we have partitions 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and we use these partition names as the names of the states in the minimized DFA. Since partition 1 contains the initial state Q0, we have partition 1 as the initial state of the minimized DFA. On an A, partition 1 goes to partition 2. On an B, partition 1 goes to partition 5. On a B, partition 2 remains in partition 2, whereas on an A, it goes to partition 4. From partition 4 on an A, we go to partition 2, and on a B, partition 4 remains in partition 4. On an A from partition 5, we go to partition 3, and on a B, we go to partition 4. From partition 3 on an A, we remain in partition 3. On a B, we go to partition 2. In the minimized automaton, partitions 4 and 5 are the final states. We draw the new transition function table with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as the states. We define this DFA as M dash. 
containing the state set q dash, the alphabet, the same alphabet sigma, the transition function q dash, which is in, ta in the table with the initial state one and the final state set f dash containing four and five. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave your feedback in the comments and I'll try and respond to it. Please like, share and subscribe to support my channel. Thanks for watching my video. This is Antonio and I'm signing out.